Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm your host Edgar and today we're going to be talking about the Citizen Primo Chronograph. It comes in all different themes and colors but I really like this one here that's sort of uh, racing inspired. Let's just take a look at this watch. So you can tell it's got a really cool looking carbon fiber face. Red accents. That's why I have these other items here. The Citizen website and other websites list this as black and orange. Um, but to my eyes, I'm seeing red. So I brought out a few orange and red items so you can compare for yourself. If you really wanted orange and you get red, you might not be happy with that. So here is uh, orange, what orange looks like. As you can see, doesn't look quite look the same to me. And here's red. So to me, it's red. Those are red threads. And I mean, the hands might have a tinge of orange to them, but it looks more, looks more red to me. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, this is a really nice watch. Let me just show what it looks like. And then we'll go over the features and the functions of the watch. Not very thick. Typical screw down back, really nice. Really deep etching compared to the, some of the light ones I've seen on some of the Citizens. This is um, at least the strong etching of that really cool uh, Citizen Globe. Here we have the chronograph pushers. All right, so let's get started with the review. Let me show you before I forget, wristwatch check. I am wearing my Tissot T-Touch Expert 2, not the solar version. This is the original version, and I have a review on the solar version if you want to see that. Now that I've been wearing this for a couple months, I'm ready to do reviews, so I'll be doing this one next. So look forward to that. <clears throat> so here we go. All right, so this is a 60-minute chronograph, typical of racing chronographs. And it's got those uh, racing cues, that fiber, I mean, the uh, carbon fiber background. It's kind of reminiscent of the checkered flag in racing. You've got the pattern repeated on, repeated on the leather strap. That is just pressed in. That's not actually a carbon fiber pressed into leather. And then there's a, a nice threaded border with the red thread accents. It helps along with the theme. Also, the sub dials have the indices that kind of make it look like gears. And even though they're not meshing or touching, it gives that illusion that they're gears. So again, automotive design cues there. And also, it looks like an instrument panel with those three sub dials. And then that streak of red on the tachometer scale. You know, really gives it that racing look. All right, so let's go over the dimensions of this nice watch here. So it is 40, it's a large 45 millimeter in diameter. The lug to lug width is a rather large 52 millimeters. Between the lugs or strap size is gonna be 22, which is awesome. 22 millimeters is one of the most common strap, bracelet, or uh, rubber band sizes. So no shortage of uh, accessories that you can put on here as far as straps are concerned. And not only that, if you notice, look how much space there is there where the uh, holes for the strap are near the bottom. So that gives you plenty of room to put thick NATOs or anything else you want to put in there. So that's, um, I think that's a really nice plus. For thickness, we have uh, barely over 11 millimeters, an astounding like 11.5 or under. It is really thin. That's what makes this watch very comfortable, very comfortable uh, to wear. Here we can see it has a screw down crown. It's screwed on crown. Yeah, no screwed on back. No screwed on crown. This is a push down crown like a lot of uh, citizen chronographs. Um, 100 meter water resistance. We have a utilitarian no extra curves or anything. We got those bevels here on the lugs. Gives it a really nice utilitarian, sporty design. It's all matte finish. 
There's no uh, polished anywhere on the case. Of course, the case back is polished and the pushers and the crown are polished. I think it gives it a nice contrast, not too blingy. So if this was actually used in a racing car or out watching the races in a bright sunny day, you're not going to be blinded looking at the watch. It's a very subdued. I mean, it's got some shininess to the black and so forth, uh, but not enough to blind you except for the little nice accents on the, on the pushers and the crown. This is a two position crown. It's got nice, uh, a nice crown pop. Uh, pulled out the first one and that does the quick set date and then the second one is going to be able to set the time which has uh, hour hand minute hand and the second hand uh, the date window is kind of deep like on a lot of citizens there's a lot of complaints about heart difficult to see this one's no different however it is easier to see with the white border to direct your eyes down that little bit of a tunnel um, but at least the inside has black background with white lettering. And also, if you notice, we have a full size three. The, the watch is large enough that the movement is more centered and that date wheel is not gonna encroach upon a three, which is awesome, I love that. I don't mind it sometimes in the three, depends on the watch. Um, but the date is well done for what it is. Um, I like it. I, I use the date all the time. Not overly verbose on the writing on the dial. Citizen Echo Drive, that's it. You don't have five lines of writing, which keeps it very clean. It has uh, Roman numeral, I mean, uh, Arabic numerals. So you can tell we're at a 12 o'clock position. We have a 12 o'clock uh, position indices, which is double what the six is. So in the dark, you can tell the orientation of the watch, but you could also tell by the pushers as well, if you were gonna feel that in the dark. It has really nice loom. We'll check out the loom shop a shop before the video ends. Uh, but it's a really nice, cool uh, blue loom on there. I believe that the carbon fiber has nothing to do with the solar panels, which is strictly uh, just the way that I've seen so many citizen solar panels that um, grayish kind of look. So I think the sub dials are actually the solar panels. And being a large 45 millimeter watch, those are rather large. So that's enough to power this for six months. Once you get it fully powered, you could leave it six months in the safe or something. Uh, but I don't recommend that. Just like you wouldn't let your car battery go all the way dead all the time. That's why people complain that they're having problems with their citizen watches. You've got to keep it charged. That's all. Put it in the sun, put it in the window. If it's in the winter, like I am in Maine, uh, it's getting to be May now. The flowers are coming out and people are coming out. Um, but throughout the winter. I put my Citizen and other solar watches uh, like G-Shocks in the window, some window light, you know, a couple hours a day, a couple times a month. And, and then I keep them always fully charged. And that's always good to do. So let's look at the subdials at you know, the 12 o'clock position here. We have the 60 minute chronograph, very typical of racing chronographs. You're not gonna see 12 or 24 hour chronographs here. You got uh, 60 minutes. Here we have the 24 hour dial. And that just tells you whether it's AM or PM at a glance. And also, if you want to count the little indices, you can use it as a 24-hour clock. And right now, it's 2 o'clock, and that's why it's 12, 13, 1400 hours. 1406 to be exact. As I mentioned before, here's the second hands. So that's always going to be running. We have the chronograph hand in red, waiting there to be used at the 12 o'clock position. And that is it for the subtitles. Not too much to that. Around the outside of the face, you can see the tachometer scale. And you can use that for timing miles per hour and a couple of other functions. And then they have a nice streak of red here that you often see on gauges and so forth. So the movement is a caliber B612 Echo Drive. You never have to change the battery. And the lithium. Uh, batteries in these watches are lasting 20, 25 years or more. I think 26 is the record. Uh, so that's basically that's basically the useful life of the watch. A quarter of a century. Man, you can't beat that. That's with no maintenance. Like no maintenance except putting it in the sun. That's really astounding. Uh, we have a mineral anti-reflective coated crystal on here. You're not going to get a sapphire, though I wish it was. And the crystal is a little bit proud, which means it sticks up above the bevel 
not even the width of a, probably the width of a hair, way less than a sheet of paper. So not much to catch on to anything. While we're looking at the bezel, that is a black ion plated. And we have satin finished to go along with the satin finish of the case. But let's see if we can see that here. So if you look at the bezel, right at the top, it's shiny. So we've got glossy on top. Actually, it's only it's only gloss. I can see now it's glossy on the bevel. So right on the sides, it's matte, and then it's glossy right there, where it's really glary. And then on top, it's back to um, satin again. Again, you won't get that glare looking at the watch because that's satin as well. All right, let's see what else we can talk about here. Um, the loom is on both hands, all the indices and the Arabic numerals, but it is not on the second hand. Um, this is 316L stainless steel. And the chronograph hand. My chronograph hand was misaligned uh, when I got it. It was just one. Um, let's see if I can get straight on. You can see it's perfectly centered. Um, it's just the lens here, but believe me, it's, there, it's dead center. There we go. Put it right under the lens, you'll see it's dead center. But it was, and it was touching that left indice on the 12 o'clock position. So it was actually leaning right in here. And in the manual, it tells you how to fix it. Actually, basically, really easy. All you do is just hold this pusher down uh, for three seconds. And it'll go into alignment mode. And then you would uh, click the pushers to move it. And I just had to move it. This, this is the only one that moves it actually to the right. So I moved it to the right once, and that was it. I was all done. So it's nice that they have that feature. Because it does. Uh, it's a large hand, so sometimes a little shock or something. Uh, could make that uh, not be aligned. So it's nice that they have that uh, in there. Um, I'll show you how the chronograph works. One push, just like any other chronograph, the top button is usually the chronograph uh, start. And there it is starting. And then this will begin to move here and count the minutes as they go along. We're not going to wait totally for that. A push again of this pusher will, of the upper right pusher, will stop it. And then the lower right will reset it. It's not a flyback, so you're going to watch that sweep go around. <clears throat> now this is a one-fifth of a second chronograph. So let's see if we can take a look here. And if you look at the uh, one minute or one second increments, there are actually five more lines between the seconds, and that's where the one-fifth of a second um, timing is possible. So we'll take a look at that now. We'll do it again. As you can see, it's sweeping five times per second. So if we stop it in the middle, probably can't focus that close. But right here, we can see that it's 6.2 uh, seconds. So that's pretty cool. Fifth of a second chronograph. Bring that back to sweep again. All right, so that's the chronograph. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that I missed here. Just going through my notes. Uh, Oh, the model number, the reference number for this watch is CA or Charlie Alpha 0681-03E for Echo. And that's the that's the reference number. Okay, let's see. Not too much more. It's not a really complicated watch. Um, oh yeah, let's go through the strap. All right, so we have here a leather strap. This is one of the most comfortable straps that uh, of, uh, of leather straps that I've ever worn. It is super soft, super supple, good look. It's not a rally strap. Some of these uh, uh, racing chronographs do have that with the holes in it. I saw one that had uh, large monocle type orange stripes going through here. That one's a cool one too. And that one does have a rally strap, but this one is more solid, but it still has a sporty rally kind of look uh, with the carbon fiber and everything. Stainless steel buckle, matte finish. Pin buckle system, which I love. It's my favorite buckling system. I hate those deployment class, butterfly class things. They, they drive me nuts. All right, so we got leather keepers here, uh, also soft. One is sewn in here. There's also holes here, so you can release the buckle if you want to change the buckle out or something, or if it's damaged or whatever. And then, then we have a floating one. So this way, if you have, uh, you could keep it, double keep it for safety, but also, um, when you put the watch through the keepers. If you have smaller wrists and this is sticking out, 
this keeper is perfect for keeping that tucked in look and looking pretty cool uh, let's see here anything else that I missed all right we're gonna try on the watch now I have seven and a half inch wrists rather large my wrists are 56 or 58 millimeters across so I can handle uh, pretty large watches okay, let me put this on off camera here let's see how this looks there we go yeah oh man this is like I've been wearing this for the past couple months and it is super soft and comfortable being only 11 11 and a half millimeters high um, this watch is extremely comfortable to wear it's only 3.2 ounces total and that's not very heavy for a watch yeah that is super comfortable now you can see here um, 52 millimeter lugs and I still have a little bit of room on either side a couple millimeters so this is about almost max if you want to watch it look good on your wrist that's about you don't want to go much larger than that so I would say maybe depends on well some wrists are round and some are sort of flat like mine so the inches doesn't always tell the story and whether a watch is gonna fit or not it's the width across sometimes from here to here and as you can see those those are that's a big watch if you have a small wrist I would say it might be a little too big because it is a 45 uh, millimeter watch so that's the wrist shot on that all right let's go through the pros and cons and we'll wrap up this review so it doesn't get too long all right so pros and cons we got a low cost this watch is only a few hundred bucks you can't go wrong with that with, a, with solar and everything you're getting on here uh, it's just gorgeous it's a very handsome watch so that's I put that in the pros it's thin and comfortable that everything about it the watch doesn't sit too high on your wrist either um, from the way that the lugs are designed it's got a nice curve down so it sits right against the wrist there is no breaking period on this strap so this way it's going to be comfortable right off the bat so really comfortable the watch and the leather strap itself um, I give the pros the design I just love the design I just like the way it looks and with all different co uh, color variations there's probably something uh, for everyone's taste um, the cons are readability the readability is good for chronograph but a lot of chronographs the hands are just uh, awfully thin this one's no different um, because there's a lot of loom on it it's kind of easier to see but still when you get a little bit busier dials it's not like a diver or a uh, field watch it's much easier to see so just be aware and this is optimal lighting right here so just be aware that in certain lighting it takes a little bit longer to pick up the time than most of my other watches but that's the same with most chronographs this is better than most uh, you don't have a crazy chrome border or something which I see sometimes on watches around the sub dials and what happens is when you get a white hand like this that goes across one of those white borders on sub dials when it's in this position or this position here man it's hard to tell what time it is this doesn't have that problem so the readability isn't actually bad at all probably nitpicking on that uh, date read readability uh, just like the rest of the uh, citizen watches it's not the greatest um, one of the nitpicks too is on the operation of the chronograph and this is I'm not picking on this watch because it's the same on most um, on most quartz chronographs that I've seen like this one where what happens is when you touch when you uh, set off the chronograph there's a click let me see if I can bring it over here so you can hear it but when you push it again there's nothing no sound at all nothing and then on the bottom when you set it again you do get a click there's the, oops, it's too hard. there's the click we'll do it one more time on off reset all right um so anybody who has nice uh, mechanical chronographs you get a click on the stop and the uh, the start and the stop and the reset this one it's only on the start uh, so don't get disappointed in that it's not a, a mechanical watch i'm going to wrap it up right here thanks so much for watching my reviews please hit like and subscribe if you like it and, and found it informative and hit that bell notification if you want to see when my next video is uploaded which is going to be pretty soon when i do my tso t-touch one of my favorite watches thanks so much for watching we'll catch you next time take care